Hello all you wonderful people, it's me, Train Lover 16 Recently, I have reached 100 subscribers. Thank you so much for this amazing achievement. And so in celebration of this event, I am going to share with you the history of the Red Cliff and Guinea Bridge Railway. Now, before we begin, I just want to apologise for not uploading this video sooner, because this video has taken a lot of work to do, and, um, but it's here now, so enjoy. And I also, I also want to let you know that I'm recording this video unscripted, so apologies if I do a lot of upping and erring and kind of stuff like that. So, anyways, let's begin. Okay, so in 1845, Cambridge Station opens on the Eastern Counties Railway's extension from Bishop Sortford. Now, I know what you're thinking. What on earth does this have to do with the Redcliffe and Guinea Bridge Railway? Trust me, it'll all make sense as it goes along. So then, they decide to build a line from Cambridge to St Ives. Now, not far from St Ives was the town of Redcliffe which gets its name from the red cliffs that lie just above it. So, and there were loads of minerals within those cliffs, and where there's minerals, there's money. So it's only logical to build a railway from St Ives up to Redcliffe and, and, run, and run some passenger services as well, as get all those minerals, those money-making minerals, yes. So they plan out a route from St Ives to Redcliffe, gets approved, lot, the line is built, and, and then on the 15th of July 1850, the Red, Redcliffe station officially opened to passengers, and, and goods trains as well, you know, with all those rich minerals located within the Red Cliffs which you often see in the videos in Redcliffe Railway Tales, where the town gets its name from. So yeah, that's what happened on the 15th of July, 1850. In 1853, the Midland Railway opened a branch line from Leicester to Guinea Bridge. Now by this, I mean Guinea Bridge Town Station, not Guinea Bridge Junction. Guinea Bridge Town is, a lo is on the national network and is never seen in the show. In 1855, a brand because of this new railway line, a brand new housing development was built to the south of Guinea Bridge, and, a li and the line was extended as a result. The original Guinea Bridge station is renamed Guinea Bridge Town, and the new station is named Guinea Bridge Parkway. 1860, the, e the Eastern Counties Railway decides to extend their line from Redcliffe to Guinea Bridge Parkway to link up with the Midland Railway, and as with five intermediate stations en route, those were Redcliffe West, and Redcliffe the Station was renamed to, to Redcliffe Central Station. So Redcliffe West, this was then followed by Windberg, and then Raiden City, Nutford, Stone, Stoneford, and then finally Guinea Bridge Parkway. So yeah, that's where it ended up. And as a result of this extension, Guinea Ridge Parkway was renamed to Guinea Ridge Junction. In 1865, the Midland Railway decided to build their own line to link up with the Eastern Counties Railway at Redcliffe. But this one only had one intermediate station at Yalehurst, which was, which was, not, which was bigger than what the station is nowadays, but I'll come back to that. And if you're wondering what that... Um, what that hut overgrown line was that you keep seeing in the series. I'll get to that later as well. So in 1870, the Eastern Counties Railway, which by now had been renamed to the Great Eastern Railway, builds a brand new line via Edendale and Bexgate, because A, those villages wanted a railway, and B, they, um, B, they want, the Eastern Counties Railway wanted a better connection. And also, ooh, Bexgate. I wonder what that could. I wonder what that could mean. Let's find out. In 1875, the Midland Railway opened their own version of the Eastern Counties Railway's line, which led to the creation of the Bexgate flyover, passing over, over what was called Bexgate Valley Station, and a new station 
built beyond the Bexgate flyover at Crowham. So yeah, 18, 1875, the Bexgate flyover opened, as well as Bexgate Valley and Crowham Stains. In 1883, a brand new loco yard opened up at Redcliffe, of, and it looked a lot different to how it looks today. 1866, the rolling stock yard opened, and it was a lot bigger than this back then, just so you know. In 1890, the Great Northern Railway built a brand new line from Stevenage to Yalehurst, and this is what that overgrown line looks like. It went behind, it goes behind Yalehurst station and goes off into a tunnel, and... Um, and the station was made bigger as a result, but obviously nowadays it's just a little halt because hardly ever anyone uses it. So this was a brand new line, link line from Stevenage to Yalehurst. So, yeah. And this became a major express route eventually, but we'll get to it later. In 1900, all three companies signed an agreement to allow themselves to run trains in the Redcliffe and Guinea Ridge area freely and without conflict. So, that's, yeah, that made it a lot stronger. 1955, uh, no, 1905, the agreement grew stronger as the company started running express trains to and from London over each and other's lines via Guinea Bridge Junction and to other destinations in the north as well. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much there. 1910, more trains started running over the lines mostly freight trains and uh, slow passenger trains so yeah 1910 that happened in world war in 1914 world war one begins and track it, traffic on the line increases even more business was booming then and every and, and the companies were making so much revenue out of out of their big agreement and it seems nothing could go wrong but a stormy February night in 1916 changed their luck. A massive three-way accident at Guinea Bridge Junction ruins the relationship of all three companies. So the so one train which was run by the Eastern Counties Railway, one train that was run by the Midland Railway, and one train that was run by the Great Northern Railway, they they all crashed into each other. And and the companies were rowing over who was to blame. So, um, but they but they never figured it out and they never recovered from it. By the end of World, and by the end of World War One, their agreement is torn up and they start running fewer trains. And the cost of running their trains goes up because they have to pay tax to each other. This puts the prices of tickets up, drawing passengers away from the train and and going to the car. So all three companies lost out, lost out after that accident. It really hurt their relationship. In 1920, a brand new link line is proposed that, that was running from Edendale up up to Crowham and then and then on to um onto and then onto and then uh, and then onto Nutford and onto Guinea Bridge. So who who should build this new line? Me, they all said at the same time. But they um but they really couldn't decide. So yeah, moving on. But after three long years of arguing over who should be the new line, the Grouping Act comes along, and all three companies merge into the LNER, oh, and construction on the new line officially begins. In 1925, the brand new line opened, and a brand new, new express train called the Redcliffe Pullman was inaugurated. It was a big express train that ran from that, that ran from London. And Liverpool Street via uh, via Redcliffe and Guinea Bridge and on and on to um, and on and onwards up to um, up to Sheffield and Manchester uh, and, but it, but it no longer runs today 
but we'll get back to it later. 1928, three new freight depots open up at Redcliffe, Guinea Bridge and Raiden. The ones at Redcliffe and Guinea Bridge are still operating today, but the one at Raiden is closed now. Yeah, that's a bit unfortunate. In 1935, the Bexgate flyover is blown over in a storm and has to be rebuilt. So you see, the Bexgate flyover you see in the videos isn't actually the one from 1875. It's the one from 1935, but a short section of it isn't even from 1935, but we'll get to that later. In 1939, World War One begins, and construction on a new RAF base begins at Nutford. This RAF base was did eventually become Nutford Airport, but we are going to get back to everything that I'm mentioning. In February 1940, RAF Nutford officially opened. But then in 1942, Bex Be Bexgate Valley Station and part of the Bexgate flyover was bombed to smithereens. See, in an air raid that the Germans fought, forged over, they meant to destroy the brand new they meant to destroy the brand new Nutford RAF Nutford base, but but they hit Bexgate Valley Station by accident, and it completely blew up. Part of the Bexgate flyover was damaged as well. Um, the the flyover was rebuilt the following year, and a new and a new station at Bexgate Valley was promised, but never became reality. So then, on the seventh of May, nineteen forty-five, World War Two came to an end, and celebrations were held at RAF Nutford. Yeah, that's basically it. 1948, the Big Four merges to become British Rail, along with the LNER, and so the railways around Redcliffe officially became BR property. And then in 1950, Redcliffe Station celebrated its 100th anniversary. However, I'm sorry to say, shortly after the anniversary, the next few years would see the decline of the railways around Redcliffe. In 1951, passenger numbers on the line slowly but surely began to decrease. 1953, Stoneford Station closed. We, yeah, that's really sad. Stoneford Station closed in 1953 because its passenger numbers were so low. Followed by Crowham in 1955, and then the situation got even worse. In 1957, Windberg Station was burnt down by a by a huge fire that was that was said to have started because of an electrical fault. But when the firemen arrived, they were unable to save the station. It burned to the ground, and everything was destroyed. It was, yeah, it was really sad. And, and BR said they couldn't build a new Windberg station because it just wasn't worth it with the decreasing passenger numbers. Um, only one year later, Redcliffe West Station closed and, and, the, uh, and Redcliffe Central Station and went back to just Redcliffe. 1960 was when was the year that the lorries started taking away the line's goods traffic, and the and due to the sad and sorry state the railway was in, the Redcliffe Pullman was retired, and all of uh, and all of the Pullman coaches in its fleet were broken up, except for one coach, which you see as is the Pullman coach of the Picnic Flyer, which was saved Eve, when the railway was 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 well i'll get back to what i'm what i'm about to say later 1961 edendale station closed along with the link line in up to crowham and and through to nutford airport but by this point barely anyone even cared except for a few people that is but I'll get back to that in a second. In 1963, most of the railway lines around Redcliffe and, Ki and Guinea Bridge are put under the Beeching Railway Closure Report Acts. So if you don't know who Dr. Beeching is, he 
he put a proposal in to close over two, over 6,000 miles of unprofitable railway line you know, in, in, the, in the UK and, um, and along with this over 2,000 stations closed as well so yeah really sad good and not a lot of them did close but after but after a near death of the Red Cliffs and Guinea Bridge Railway he one man would step in to save it a man by the name of Duncan F Jenkins decided to buy the railway off British Rail, Rail's hands to run it for himself and if you don't know who Duncan F Jenkins is he is the he is the grandfather of conductor Jeremy who of course is the cousin of Mr Eric we'll get back to all this logic later anyways when when Duncan proposed it along with some of his friends Beeching considered and then he agreed as long as they could provide their own locomotives and rolling stock which they agreed to do as well and that was actually pretty good because at the time a lot of the BR um, stock was being withdrawn yeah a lot of the BR stock was being uh, I mean the BR locomotives were steam locomotives were being withdrawn so Duncan decided to purchase them himself to run the railway with and they also got some coaches as well along with a Redcliffe Pullman coach one of the Redcliffe Pullman coaches which is now used as the railway's main first class coach so anyway moving on the following year in 1965 the Redcliffe and Ridge Railway officially became a registered business yeah that was a positive for them and in 1966 Mr Jenkins began to fix the railway up from its sad and sorry state drawing people back to it from a huge marketing campaign and the steam engines which were slowly being and marketing the steam engines as well which were slowly being retired from everyday life on British Rail so people could come and live in the area and get to work on a steam train every day even after the rail the uh, the, the the BR tr steam trains were retired 1970 construction on a brand new Winburg station began so yeah Winburg station was rebuilt in 1970 after it was burned down by fire in 1950 1957 then in 1973 the former Great Northern Railway line from Stevenage up to Yalehurst closed to passengers due to diminishing numbers and was for and for 25 years was for goods trains only and then in 1975 the new Windberg station opened so yeah new Windberg station opened in 1975 1976 was the first year of the picnic flyer train and that so that was really good steam trains operated on it including the new Redcliffe Pullman coach which had recently been restored and you see in the videos now and then on the 2nd of May 1980 conductor Jeremy was born so yeah that was a positive yeah he was the grandson of um, uh, of Mr. Jenkins mm, yeah and then in 1981 Alan and David arrived on the railway you know I really should give Alan a lot more, a bit more screen time David gets a lot of screen time but Alan hasn't been seen since episode one kind of feel bad for Alan he is a main character though but the reason why he isn't seen as much is because he I'm currently he's he's not currently in service I'm building I'm I'm making him into a brand new engine as of now so hopefully he should get more screen time in the future hopefully at least I hope so anyway moving on 1985 was the year Redcliffe station was rebuilt and modernized to get to the to how it looks today yeah so in 1985 Redcliffe station was rebuilt to make it look how it is today uh, yeah so that happened in 
1985. And on the 3rd of June 1987, Mr. Eric was born. He's really, um, he's a rip. He's a really nice man, Mr. Eric. He would eventually become the controller of um, the Red Cliff and Guinea Bridge Railway, as you know. But we'll get back to that in a second. In 1990, Ethan arrived on the railway. And then in 1991, Yalehurst Station was downgraded to a halt due to its diminishing passenger numbers. But it hasn't closed entirely yet. At least I hope it won't. So yeah, 1991, Yalehurst Station was downgraded to a halt. And in 1993, Sir Callum arrived on the railway. And he was a nice addition. He works with Ethan, as you know. Yeah, he's really nice. 1998, the old GNR line closes to freight traffic and was abandoned for nature to reclaim. So that's why it's all overgrown 20 years later. So yeah, in honor of the millennium in 2000, Redcliffe Station was rebuilt. Uh, uh, no, not Red Redcliffe, Raiden City. Oh God. And it's named a city, it's called Raiden City because it has a cathedral there, as you know, yeah. 2005, the loco and rolling stockyards were completely remodeled to get them to how they look today. Yeah, they got a bit smaller and a little bit more messy, but, um, it was done to save costs, yeah. And in 2000, in September of 2009, Mr. Jenkins died of pneumonia at the age of 89, and Mr. Eric takes over running the railway at the age of 22. And then shortly after, he hired Conductor Jeremy, which he almost fired in 2015 after his little, um mishap with um david so yeah 2010 a lot of modernization work took place on the railway 2011 saw the arrival of robert mm -hmm. 2012 was the year raiden city freight depot closed due to it not being used that much 2013 freddie arrived on the railway in 2014, Dennis arrived, and in 2015, Peter arrived, and then in the same year was when the very first episode took place. Yeah, in 2015, the episode David and Jeremy took place, and the story Outdated But Reliable also took place in 2015. And all the other episodes in Season 1 take place in 2016. So as you know, in early February of 2016, VTES arrived on the railway. And then uh, two weeks later, Brian arrived. And then in May of, uh, no, not May, April of that year, um, J uh, um, J Jack visited the railway, but obviously that didn't turn out very well, as you know from watching the episodes. And then in May of 2016, Jacob arrived. Now I tell you more what it what got up to in um in 2018, but um I'm afraid I cannot tell you that because if I did, I'd be giving away spoilers for all the future episode plans I have. So yeah, that's as much I, as I can tell you for the railway now. And yeah, that's that brings us right up date and here's the map of the railway in 2018 so down in the corner there down in the corner we have Redcliffe, Redcliffe station then further up we've got um Windberg station then Raiden city then uh, then Stoneford and then over there is Guinea Bridge Junction where the national network joins up down there is Yalehurst station with the old line going down there and then we head back to Redcliffe with the line to um, St Ives and Cambridge going off that way. And then, let's see, there's the closed Stoneford Station. There's the closed um, um, Red Redcliffe West Station. There's the closed, there's, all right, oh, okay, I already told you about that. There's the closed um, Edendale Station, which will soon be reopened, hopefully in season two. And over there in the middle is the closed um, Bexgate Valley Station. Mr. Eric does hope and hope to reopen all of these stations at some point, 
but that won't happen until much later in the series. So yeah, that and over there is the is the branch line up to Leicester, and that black line heading up and down is the Midland Main Line. So yeah, that's pretty much the history of the Redcliffe and Union Ridge Rally so far. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for a hundred subscribers. And now before I go, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about episode nine of the show. I haven't been able to do any work on that because I've been too busy with this. But luckily, once this episode, but once this episode is on uh, this hundred subscriber special is on YouTube, I'm going to um, then then uh, so once it's on YouTube, this this video once this video is on youtube i'm going to um uh, i'm i'm going to start work on script work for episode 09 to, in tomorrow and then get it hopefully fingers crossed get it done for um uh, get the script finished by friday so that i can do some filming over the weekend and then edit it and hopefully get it uploaded for um tuesday the 14th no promises though. If it don't don't be surprised if it doesn't um, come out on Tuesday the 14th of August. So yeah, don't be s disappointed by that. But anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you for 100 subscribers and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye.